short story. So this was my first book, and more recently I published a second book called Dancing Fingers, which is a book of poetry that I co-authored with my sister. So I really love to write, and what we're going to be talking about today, personal narrative, is a very important part of writing. Does anyone want to guess what, or tell me what is a narrative? Okay, well, a narrative is essentially a story. So, have any of you read... Have any of you read a story this week? I see some raised hands. Great, so you all have probably read narratives before then. Uh, a narrative is just a story. So if we know that a narrative is a story, then are there any ideas on what a personal narrative might be? Loud, you know better. I... A story about yourself? story about yourself. Very good. So a personal narrative, if you take the narrative and you know it's a story and you just put personal in the front, it's a personal story. It's a story about yourself or something that happened to you. So fictional narratives, uh, The Lord of the Rings is a fictional narrative and so is your favorite cartoon. But stories from your own life are narratives too. And these are what you call personal narratives. So I want you to write down a fictional narrative and personal narrative. So. Okay, um, and raise your hand if you finish writing that down. Great, okay, we'll move on. So, personal narrative is a story from your own life, and a fictional narrative is a story that someone has made up, like uh, The Lord of the Rings or The Chronicles of Narnia or Charlotte's Web. Those are all examples of fictional narratives. So today we're going to learn about personal narrative and how to select a good uh, story from your own life, because you've had lots of things happen to you but the difference between a really exciting trip to a theme park and maybe just a really boring day, you know, which one of those is going to make a more exciting story, um, we're going to be talking about how to choose a good personal narrative. So what kinds of stories do you like? Fiction. Fiction, okay. Do you like uh, maybe historical fiction, fantasy, action, adventure? Is there a more specific type of fiction? Adventure. Adventure, okay. What else? Action. Oh. Wow. Nonfiction. Nonfiction, great. Do you like uh, what kind of nonfiction? Science. Okay, science books, great. Uh, who else? What, what other kinds of books do you like? I like fiction and I like science fiction. Science fiction, okay, great. So, you guys seem to like a pretty wide range of different types of books. Now, what do you think is one thing that probably all of these genres or types of books have in common? They all tell stories. They all tell stories, yes, they do all tell stories. Now, reading those stories, um, do you want to keep reading for for these for good books? Do you want to keep reading? Do you want to keep turning the pages? Seeing some nodding? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you probably, uh, your favorite books probably aren't the ones that put you to sleep halfway through the first chapter. They're the ones that are like, oh no, I really want to find out what happened to this character. Is he going to get out of here in time? So, the stories that we like, uh, we often have things that we don't know. They're suspenseful. We're not sure how everything's going to turn out. If you just open up a book and it says on the first page, at the end of this book, the character will have successfully defeated the evil villain and everyone will live happily ever after. Now, once upon a time, you know, it wouldn't be very exciting if they just suddenly told you, oh, here's everything that's going to happen right at the beginning of the book. So. Suspense, or not knowing how things are going to turn out, keeps you reading. And that's something that you'll see in books, whether they're science fiction, historical fiction, action and adventure. All of those books, um, or at least the good ones, are probably at least a little bit suspenseful. 
So can you remember a time in your own life when you weren't sure how things were going to turn out? A suspenseful time in your own life. Um, when my birthday party, everything was going wrong. Oh no, at your birthday party everything was going wrong? So that would be an excellent thing, right? Because you might, you would be able to describe this went wrong and that went wrong and you weren't sure would the birthday party be a total failure, you know? Uh, that's very suspenseful. What else? Okay, you had a sleepover and you got hurt. I'm sorry to hear that. So, um, and and that and then that would make a good personal narrative as well because you talk about your feelings afterwards and um, and that sort of thing. So, what are some other examples? Anyone else? Suspenseful times. I was um, watching a game and football game, and I didn't know if my team was going to win. Okay, so a really exciting uh, time watching a football game, and, and when you have a personal narrative that, oh, so, okay. when you're writing a personal narrative, and uh, then it gives you the chance to use words to describe how you felt, and so that you, you want to make the reader imagine you know, you're on the edge of your seat, you're really rooting for your team, and, and it's easy to do out with personal narrative, and it's really fun. Okay, let's get one more example of time in your life where it was really suspenseful, you weren't sure what was going to happen. When we were in class, we read a book, and it was just a really good part, and I just wanted to know what was going to happen. Okay, so reading a book in class, and you get to a really good part, and you're not really sure what's going to happen. And I know that a lot of people have probably had an experience, maybe sometimes, whether uh, they're reading a book or watching a movie or, or there's something that they're doing at home and maybe then you have to go to bed or you have to eat dinner or something like that and it's always uh, and uh, probably the same thing has happened at school with the bell rings or something. So yeah, there's lots of times in your own life when you're not sure how things are going to turn out. And you might think, well there's no way I can make anything as exciting as uh, as a book that I've read like Charlotte's Web or Chronicles of Narnia or one of those. There's no way I can have really big conflicts. I don't really have to save anybody, I don't um, have evil villains to fight, but there are times in your own life that are really exciting and suspenseful as well. It could be something like rooting for your team while watching a football game and getting really into it. Or it could even be something like choosing between two flavors of ice cream. If if you were just really, if you were really wanting one, but you were really wanting the other one, and we're going to be talking about how even something like that, you can make it really interesting, suspenseful, and exciting. So tip number one is to choose a memory about a difficulty, a conflict, or an obstacle. Does anyone want to tell me what a conflict is? Problem, conflict, a problem. It's a problem, yes. More specifically, a conflict is, um, a conflict could be anything from an argument or a disagreement to time you have to make a choice. So a conflict is any time when, uh, and, and there are different types of conflicts. Like let's say if you're arguing with your brother or sister, that would be an example of a conflict. But if you're even arguing with yourself, should I get this flavor of ice cream? Should I not get this flavor of ice cream? You know, that might even be a conflict. So, we have many of those conflicts in our own life. Uh, anyone want to tell me what an obstacle is? Um, something that's in your way and you can't get past it? Something that's in your way and you can't get past it. Very good. So, let's say that my goal is to get to that side of the room. And I walk over here, and suddenly I come up against a wall. Okay, I know that was sort of cheesy, but um, if there is a, an invisible wall right there, that would be my <laughs> obstacle. Now, on the other hand, if there is, um, okay, this is handy. If there is a tiger standing in my, in my way, and I walk past, and I'm like super scared of this tiger, and I'm like, no way am I going to go past that tiger, then my own fear of the tiger might be an obstacle as well. Even if the tiger is, I don't know, sleeping or something, and it's not really like in my way, if I'm too scared to get past the tiger, then my fear of the tiger might be an obstacle. So an obstacle is anything that gets in your way, stops you from getting where you want to go. And so, the, you know, people could be obstacles, objects could be obstacles, animals could be obstacles. There's lots of things that could be obstacles. They can be really physical obstacles, like if you're running and, and you suddenly come up against a roadblock or there's a big sign that says, no, don't walk past it. 
or they could be um, less obvious obstacles. Like for instance, if you really want to dive into the water, but you're so scared of jumping and you, you're just standing on the diving board and you're really scared, then your own fear would be an obstacle. So does anyone want to tell me uh, what's, what's a goal you've had and what's an obstacle that you've had? I'll I'm trying to get the high score on my video game, but I just only get three lives, so it's kind of hard. Okay, so you wanted to uh, jump another level in your video game, but you only have certain lives. Yeah, I've had that experience before. Um, what are some other examples of you've had a goal and then there's been an obstacle? Um, when, when I was outside playing behind my house yesterday, there was we were go, I was going through my backyard picking flowers and I saw a snake. Wow. Okay. So then, then the snake was your obstacle to picking flowers. Your fear of the snake was your obstacle. Um, so did you stop picking flowers then? Yep. Yeah, I'm assuming that. Yeah, you wouldn't want to stay out too much if you saw a snake. Um, but I'm glad you went inside or you stopped picking flowers. Yeah. So um, that's a very good obstacle. What is another obstacle? And it Well, I really want to get to my dad's house in Mississippi and be able to attract a big jam. Okay, so you really wanted to get to your dad's house and there was a traffic jam, so, and I bet it, it would be hard, you know, that, that's probably pretty, it would take a pretty long time to get there, the, the traffic jam. Okay, so what is, one more obstacle in the bowl? Yeah. A relative. Okay. When they talk, oh, sorry. they talk a lot. <laughs> a relative when they talk a lot. A relative when they talk a lot. You know what's funny? I have that right there, a talkative relative. Um, so... Were you were you trying to get somewhere or do something, or, and and a relative comes over and, and starts talking a lot to you? Or? Yes. Okay. So we have many obstacles in our own life, whether they're traffic jams or talk to relatives, and they make really good stories because whenever, again, as we talked about, whenever you're unsure of something, you're unsure of what's going to happen, and that creates suspense because your reader will be wondering, oh, well, what's going to happen? So you have to make sure that, that what you write about is interesting and exciting. And you can use obstacles and conflicts and times you weren't sure about what was going to happen to talk about that. So I'm going to practice writing about an obstacle. And this will be fictional. I'm not going to take it from my own life. But just to practice writing about obstacles. What kind of obstacle do you think I should write about? I <clears throat> when the first time you rode your bike was... Okay, the first time I, actually yes, I can take it from my own life, I can make this personal because um, I had a lot of obstacles to riding my bike, so I'm going to sit down and start typing. Um, so, my, my obstacle to riding my bike, um, I, I had a lot of them, I wasn't, I didn't know how to use my brakes, and so I was always really scared that I would, um, I didn't know how to use them that well, and I was always really scared that I would like uh, run out of control or something. So, let me just make this bigger. It's super excited 